Hello horse racing fans, today is July 6th, 2022, exactly 47 years ago was the great match race that never was, Ruffian vs Foolish Pleasure, an event that forever haunts this very sport. So to commemorate this event, I thought I'd make a Ruffian themed video. Now I haven't been the kindest to Ruffian on this YouTube channel, but none of that really matters in what we are talking about today. All that will matter is how good is her story as a movie. Because today, we will be reviewing the 2007 major television feature, Ruffian. The premise is simple. We watch the career of the famous racehorse Ruffian from its start all the way to her tragic death in a span of just 90 minutes. If that doesn't intrigue you, you probably will not like this movie. But if the story of Ruffian does interest you, you will get everything you want, and not much more. As a television movie, this film is not a cinematic spectacle. It owns this fact with how the story is told. Very little fluff is added to this movie, with it being very loyal to the story that it's based on. If you wanted something else from this movie, you aren't going to get it. The simplicity works to the film's advantage. The emotions and tone are uniquely theirs in comparison to other horse racing biopics. The tone comes off more relaxed, sentimental, and bittersweet than overly dramatic, with lots of piano and violins overlaying the movie. With movies that are based off of true stories, more often than not, the people that are watching it already know how the story ends. And considering that Ruffian is a more tragic film, this sort of tone and more specifically, music score works perfectly as a very subtle reminder that even during the brightest moments during the film, you know how the story is going to end. Even when you see her race, it isn't a very grandiose victory, but a more serene one as she gracefully crosses the wire to a simple orchestral tune. Even when the time finally comes for her first serious challenge against the one and only Foolish Pleasure, this sort of score stays throughout the film. A good example of how this movie sets up its race differently is in comparison to the 2003 film Seabiscuit. This is not a TV film. This is a theatrical picture that got nominated for Academy Awards. Both have a match race in their movies, but everything about the execution and end result is done differently, mainly in the scores, and how the main characters feel about the race. In Seabiscuit, the score is uplifting, as you see them train for the race, and you see Red give his pep talk to George. In comparison to War Admiral's owners, they are the most enthusiastic about this match race. They want to do it more than anything. And the score as they reach the starting tape is a slow buildup as you anxiously await a thrilling race. In Ruffian, the main characters feel very uncomfortable. The trainer Frank Whiteley has to relent and do a race he doesn't want to do. The owners are only slightly more eager than Frank and just as concerned. Even Bill Mack, who at the start was the most enthusiastic of the main cast when it comes to the race, quickly becomes angered when he sees the race get twisted into something he never wanted. Even as they saddle her up, the sad piano plays. This somber tune, in contrast to the incredibly enthusiastic fans cheering these two horses on, is mildly unnerving and definitely made me feel a pit in my stomach. It genuinely feels like you are seeing a disaster unfold. And even when the race finally starts, it isn't nearly as much crowds cheering and hooves pounding. It's slow motion of two horses running side by side. And the music chosen for this race is intense in its own way. It starts out very calming when the race begins, but it reaches its true crescendo right as Ruffian breaks down, as it gets louder and higher. What's creepy about this is how the song rises in intensity in an almost joyful manner. Getting you excited, thrilled, but you know in the back of your mind this isn't what's going on. And then suddenly it stops. Right. As Ruffian takes that faithful wrong step. Then all you can hear is the echoes of a horse in pain. It is horrifically well crafted. But after you see it the first time, it is really hard to rewatch it. In my personal experience, I've seen this film a total of three times. The first time I saw it was back in 2020, and was the main reason why I made this video that got unexpectedly popular. Rewatching it definitely gave me a newfound appreciation for the music and the way the film is executed that I couldn't really put into words when I first saw it. 
especially in the form of the characters, which is something I've purposefully avoided talking about until now. This film doesn't have many A-list Hollywood actors in it, but the actors chosen all have interesting resumes and other forms of entertainment. You got TV actors like Nicholas Pryor and Christine Belford, who play the married couple that owns Ruffian. They are also married in real life, which I think is quite wholesome. They also bring in real track announcers. Frank Miramati makes a brief cameo as the announcer during the sorority stakes at Monmouth Park. But the main announcer through the film is Dave Johnson, who was the race caller for the actual match race all the way back in 1975. Even with it being over 30 years since he had called the race, he definitely still had it in him. He does an absolutely spectacular job, and as a horse racing fan who aspires to be a horse racing announcer himself one day, I can't help but geek out whenever he appears on screen. But the cast doesn't just consist of TV actors and sports announcers, the cast also includes Laura Bailey, who is an anime voice actor of all things, playing Gotenks in Dragon Ball Z, and Toru Honda from Fruit Basket. For being one of her only live-action movie roles, she definitely does a pretty good job, especially during the scene where she talks to Bill Knack, asking Bill very simple questions about Ruffian's career while she's getting surgery under the knife. It's a very bittersweet scene, but you do gotta wonder, what compelled an anime voice actress to be a part of a horse racing movie? But those aren't the most important characters in the movie. There are two main characters who are the reason why I enjoy this movie as much as I do. First is Sam Shepard's Frank Whiteley, and Frank Wally's Bill Knack. First we got Whiteley, a mildly politically incorrect, socially inept trainer who knows only horses and not as much about people. He's Tom Smith from Seabiscuit, but even ruder. But the distinction between him and Smith is the scenario they are put in. In Seabiscuit, there are definitely parts in the movie where Tom Smith is taken out of his comfort zone and Seabiscuit becomes too popular, thus being partially owned by the public. But this time it's amped up, with Whiteley's loss of control to the public turning tragic with the eventual match race. The best part about his character is that while he comes off as cold and distant, never getting attached to his horses, not even his star Philly Ruffian, instead of him changing as the film progresses, you instead see why he needs to be the way he is. You see his strict code be put into action, as he must deal with losing the greatest horse he's ever trained too soon. Even with so much loss, he is able to wake up the next day and do it all over again. This is in contrast to the other main character of the film, Bill Knack played by Frank Wally, who some may know as Brett from Pulp Fiction, or the what guy. What? What country you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? English, motherfucker! But instead of brutally dying on screen like in that film, Frank Wally's Bill Knack only has a part of him die, the romance of horse racing. Bill does not cope with Ruffian's death in the same way Frank does. His arc starts with him showing off the book he has successfully written about the greatest resource of all time, Secretariat. But now that he has written about the greatest, he is left with a simple question. What now? You don't seem so excited about that. I've seen the greatest, okay? Wrote a book about him. Ruffian seems to be the solution, with him slowly getting more and more enthralled as he sees her continue to race. But despite reigniting his love for the sport, she eventually becomes what forever takes it away. By the end of the story, he never covers horse racing full-time again. And Wally definitely does a pretty good job as Knack. Of course, no one can quite look or sound like him. He's a one-of-a-kind individual. But they sure do get his methods of describing things down pretty well, especially during the narration segments over the course of the movie. Oh yeah, I'm surprised I didn't mention this the whole time, Frank Wally is the narrator of this film. He doesn't talk a lot, but he does add quite a bit to it. And it's during these bits of narration where he truly sounds a lot like Knack, especially if you look up interviews of the real Bill Knack talking about the race. She was huge and black and elegant. She reminded, she looked like a black swan. And her neck was arched, and she had that beautiful head and those beautiful ears, and that little white spot in the middle. And she came walking down that little ramp into the saddling area, and people parted like the Red Sea. Ruffian. She was built like a watch. A study in balance. A big, tall, full-bodied filly with a neck and head so refined, like a drawing by da Vinci. They're pretty close together. If I had to pick one character that I would say is my favorite in this movie, it definitely is Bill Knack. And that covers all the main characters in this film. So now it's time for my final review. Ruffian is a short, down-to-earth sports movie that for every moment of joy it offers in the first half, there is an underlying form of dread that is horrifically realized during its second half. 
It is a very good straightforward movie that every fan of horse racing should watch, but one viewing is enough. For that, I give this film a solid 8 out of 10, or 3 out of 4 horseshoes. And with that, hope you guys enjoyed this horse film review, and comment down other horse films I should try and review in the future. See you guys next time.